Namaste everyone. I'm Deepti. Um, and uh, if you think, if you're wondering why I'm dressed up like this, I'm at a Diwali celebration. So happy Diwali to all of you. Um, it, uh, uh, I'm very, very honored to be invited here today for my first talk on my first book called Panch Kanyas and Life Lessons for Every Woman. Um, so um, I would like to start with uh, telling you a bit about the book because I don't think a lot of you have read it, but I think you would have all known a bit about these uh, characters of the book. Uh, Panch Kanyas are five women uh, called Ahilya, Tara, Draupadi, Kunti and Mandotri belonging to two different uh, Upajivya Kavyas. Uh, of Hindu history or uh, Hindu mythology, as it might be popularly known, but we would uh, stick to Hindu history uh, called Ramayan and Mahabharat. So um, I came across a verse when I was pregnant with my first child and I was actually in America. And I, I was just reading up a bit on uh, women in um, Hindu, his, uh, Hindu history. And I'd come across this uh, verse called Ahilya, Draupadi, Kunti, Tara and Mandotri, invoking daily the Kanyas five, Destroys the greatest failings. So I got really intrigued because I had uh, read up a bit about Draupadi and uh, I'd, I'd studied literature, uh, Indian mythology in literature in college. And uh, I knew a bit about Kunti also, a bit about Mandutri also. Ahilya and Tara, I wasn't that well versed with. So it really got me interested in um, what is it about these five women that, you know, they should be remembered daily and, uh, and it would help us avoid failings in our lives. So when I read about them, um, I realized that they're grouped together uh, and called Panch Kanyas. And there's another group called Satis in, in, uh, in, in Hindu history. So uh, then I realized that they are different than the five Satis, which are basically Sita, Savitri, Damyanti, Sati, and Arundhati, whose virtues and divine qualities put them uh, on a pedestal. The Panch Kanyas are way more, they're more real and they have, human flaws which makes them imperfect but they transcend those flaws which makes them worthy of worship so i found that aspect very interesting because i i realized that you know this is what makes them more relevant for all of us today because we all also have so many flaws but we are also all willing to learn every day and indian women are evolving uh, so beautifully today and uh, we could all learn from these women who, uh, who stood a test of time in terms of relevance. Uh, so I started writing about them. So in my book, I've addressed all their individual stories in a first person accounts or what I can imagine as their first person accounts. And I've written the lessons that we can all learn from each of them. Um, the common theme has always been of transcending their lower selves and in the process becoming part of a larger design. They all uh, enable a certain uh, life around them, a certain ecosystem around them. And I think as women today, we are all enabling, uh, you know, whether it's, it's our roles played in our families or at office or at work or as mothers or sisters or friends, we enable a certain environment around us. And so we are acting life agents, just like these uh, women. So we had a lot to learn from them. Um, I can go into what is the common theme between all of them, but uh, if at any time anybody wants to ask me something, please go ahead because uh, this is going to be like a live conversational kind of, uh, you know, it won't be a, a, like a lecture on this book. I would like it, you guys to ask me questions and keep it very chatty and conversational uh, if possible. Uh, if anybody has any questions so far, you can ask me. Um, Otherwise, I can go into each character. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Hello, Deepti Ma'am. Yeah, hi. Uh, so when you said that all these, the Panchakanyas, they have a more of your know, human, they have more human flaws. And uh, so do you mean that the women who fall into this genre of Sati, Sita and all, they are devoid of it? Like, I'm, I'm unable to make that character differentiation. You know, I think they were uh, a bit more perfect. And I think uh, that's, and uh, I think they were a little less flawed for sure. 
you know i mean and today if we read any character just like we read characters of literature i'm sure we can we can uh, you know break them down and we can uh, analyze them for their flaw positives and negatives but uh, from a stand uh, from a point of view that i understood i thought that those were less flawed than panch kanyas i thought they were uh, because uh, you know they had very linear graphs so to speak whereas the panch kanyas have a graph where they rise and they fall and they're defeated and then they rise from that so i find the graph more interesting okay okay yeah uh, nitika rana you can go ahead uh, well ma'am my question is out of all five kanyas uh, which kanya do you find more uh, matches your personality more like your real person I've you know i personally book. i personally feel uh, because we have most uh, content mo, mo, uh, most amount of content uh, available on dropadi's character even when i was researching so i think she becomes uh, a bit more relatable for all, all for a lot of us because um, you know we have more to read up on her and her her journey and her trial and tribulations but i feel out of all five i think i relate to one uh, aspect of all their uh, personalities and i think when you guys also would read it you'll realize that there is something to take away from each character they they all have very very vibrant personalities so you can't say that one is uh, uh, i mean they're all relevant so and and we have so many aspects to our personality today that we can relate to you know we can always have one take away from each one of them Uh, Suresh, you can go ahead. Ah, uh, thank you, ma'am. And uh, hello, ma'am. Um, my question was: um, Was there a particular, uh, was there any particular challenge that you faced, which was prominent while you were doing the research for all of them? And a uh, parallel to it is: Is there a particular myth? about any of the five or all of the five which you thought uh, was very popular in the market but that's actually a myth and not the truth okay so the first question the challenge i faced is because i think i i also fell into the same trap sometimes to analyze them from a, a you know a, a slightly anglicized view sometimes and i had to constantly train myself to see them from a, a more adhyatmic view which i think a lot of us have to constantly train our mind because maybe the way we we've studied uh, our mind still sometimes gets tuned into a an anglicized way of thinking so that was my challenge and that's why i had to revise the book and you know change certain terms uh, uh, you know change certain terminology which uh, which was a bit more uh, which didn't fall in like there, there like there are certain terms for which there is no hindu uh, there is no english uh, translation so then i have left them like that for example the word kanya and uh, kanya if 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 you were to loosely translate it it translates as virgin but this is not like but in uh, in hindu in hindu history or hindu religion we do not put that much uh, we do not we do not have the concept of a virgin or any uh, any uh, uh, kind of uh, we, like a person's puberty or virginity does not hold that much uh, irrelevance so when we say kanya here we actually mean a girl like quality which could be in a woman of any age a certain kind of so we do not get into the aspect of virginity or purity you know right. so there were certain terms which i think then had to stay the way they were so when i meant mm -hmm. when i write kanyas then i let it be kanya i did not change it to virgins uh and also except for the first couplet because i had to uh, mention it in that way uh what is the second question sorry was there a popular myth that uh, you came across i think, which... i think one of the popular myths that i kind of countered was again and about uh, dropadi's character there are a lot of people feel that she uh, 
is a feminist but um, but i when i re- read up a bit more on these women i realized that you know the kind of uh, fe- what the concept of feminism that we are we've been taught in a in a, in a more western way of education that doesn't really apply to these women because um, hindu myth hindu history does not have one size fits all kind of feminism they all feminists and they all uh, i mean they are, it's a, it's a, they should be looked at in a very gender neutral way so i think that was one of the challenges that i think i had to overcome in my mind uh, dipti ji instead of going towards questions now uh, i guess i would like to request ki let us dive into the characters first which you have depicting in the books okay and uh, after right. that we will continue with the Uh, whatever perceptions okay. we do have about them okay so first let's talk about ahilya i have called her like uh, she's often accused of being an adulteress uh, but if you read up on her she was actually like i have called her a seeker uh, she is a character that first uh, appear, like she appears in the ramayan and many, because there are many versions of the ramayan in india there are many versions of her story i, I picked up one version uh, in which uh, she uh, is first born of uh, bhagwan brahma and then she married married uh, marries at a very young age rishi gautam and then she has the transgression with uh, indra at one point and because of that she has to go through a period of penance so that is her main story uh She, in short her story is of a dutiful daughter who became a dutiful wife to a man thrice her age raised his children and ran his household to the best of her ability but then one day gave into a transgression with another man and all was ruined and then it was bhagwan ram who came to breathe life back into her because in a uh, in literature she has been referred to as a lifeless rock for many many centuries and she uh remembers bhagwan ram and that's what causes her self realization so that is a story i'm going to quote a few uh excerpts from uh because i've written all of them in um, first person accounts so i'm going to talk like ahilya right now so one of her quote says i wanted to be more i sought my own destiny my noble purpose was not to become a channel for someone else's self realization but my own here she is referring to her husband rishi gautam because he was an ascetic and a very uh, uh, a rishi of very very high caliber but she just didn't want to be just didn't want to be limited to just being his wife and keep helping him attain his evolution she wanted to have her own personal journey as well another quote is the love i kept on searching for all my life was not outside of me any love that's outside outside of you you is bound to disappoint you eventually i think because she kept chasing an idea of a perfect love an idea of a perfect man that she saw in indra she realized that one day that an idea that a love that you have that validates you from outside will disappoint you eventually and a love for yourself in terms of your own soul and your own journey will liberate you a person's spiritual journey is a solitary affair indra didn't want me as his wife nor did gautam i wasn't sure what kind of love i wanted from life now i wanted to feel pure again i wanted to feel the kind of love that would elevate me not humiliate me i started to meditate on bhagwan ram what felt like centuries past till he arrived one day and all darkness disappeared i felt alive i felt love for the first time Oh. um and then i have lessons from all their stories so i'm not going to go into all the lessons from the story of ahilya i'm going to maybe quote one or two or three so one of the lessons she talks about is while it's all good to follow your heart and experience everything once your once during your youth you must but, but your later years are better spent following a more everlasting bliss this bliss can only come from knowing yourself and realizing that youth and beauty the two biggest bearers of insecurity and constant anxiety are better let gone off gracefully another one is balance is the key 
for every one thing you do for your body, do one for your soul. For one thing you do for yourself, do something for another person. I've also quoted a few uh, quotes from uh, various genres, uh, which are relevant to these stories. One of them is a quote by uh, Jennifer Egan. Her only thought was of getting away as if she were carrying a live grenade from inside the house so that when it exploded, it would destroy just herself. Another one says, enjoy present pleasures in such a way as not to in injure future ones. So the story of Ahilya actually talks of uh, that one moment when she transgresses and how she then she repents it and maybe not even repents it, but actually goes inwards and realizes why she did what she did for many, many years. And then when she comes across Bhagwan Ram, I think it's a metaphor for coming across her higher self and realizing uh, why she did what she did and then kind of accepting it and evolving from that point onwards. So I found her story very interesting because a lot of times we all might uh, make a mistake and people around us will keep reminding us of that. And you will be in that trap for sometimes for many, many, many years. But so at, so at one point, you have to come face to face with what you did and then eventually get over it. So I found her story very interesting for that. Uh, we can go into the next story now, which is uh, Draupadi's. Uh, Draupadi, I call her the womanly woman in my, uh, in my book. Uh, so I start with very few Indians would not be familiar with the story of Draupadi. She is the quintessential feminist who got married to five heroes and assisted them in the great war. She is often also viewed as the primary cause for breaking the wheel and the ending of an era and beginning of another. I'm talking about the ending of Dwapar Yuga and beginning of, beginning of Kali Yuga. So during her story, she says. Born as the result of an Agni Yagna, I resemble the element in many ways. Sometimes temperamental, sometimes transformational. I both burned and burnt myself. My birth came with its own prophecy. I was to change the course of history. I'm not going to go into her story because I think everybody might be a bit familiar with her story. Uh, so when she talks about her disrobing, she says, it was only when I thought of Krishna that my dignity couldn't be stripped off, literally. Krishna was a reminder of going deep into myself and stripping myself of all the titles I'd begun to take too seriously. He was a reminder of who I truly was and that couldn't be taken away from me. It was only then that my dignity stayed intact. It was only then that I stayed intact. When she when she leaves for uh, when she leaves for exile with her uh, with her uh, husband, she she says, "Today I wasn't any of the selves I had identified myself with through the years. A complicated, insecure teenager, a wife who multitasked perfectly, a formidable daughter-in-law, and a house-proud mistress of the greatest palace on earth. After having lived all these lives and roles, I was basically a woman who wanted to fix being wronged." who wanted justice that would eventually take many down in its path. Did I live the life I was prophesied to? Most certainly, yes. Would I do it any other way? Maybe, maybe not. From her lessons, she talks at one point about how stories are important. They tell you a little more than dry information does. They tell you about a person's internal machinations, motivations, and hopes and fears of not only the subject, but also the teller. Being a good listener is just as important as being a good orator, perhaps even more. In another lesson, she talks how Western culture might em emphasize always speaking your mind and telling it the way it is. But from my experience, I would suggest that words uttered once only weaken your position. Words held back can have much more power. When she talks about her husbands and her marriage, she says women should make themselves indispensable as a friend to their 
participants rather than trying to compete with other women in their lives on a physical level. And when she talks of Krishna, she says, Krishna for me was my best friend and companion all my life. Later on, I realized the love I had for him was incomparable to anything I had ever felt. In this love, I found my stability and conscience. In this love, I found myself. I got reminded of uh, this excerpt from the Tao of Leadership when I finished writing Dhopadi, where it says the feminine outlasts the masculine, the feminine allows, but the masculine causes, the feminine surrenders, then encompass, encompasses and wins. So this was uh, the chapter on Dhopadi. Uh, we can open the floor once more before we get into the other three characters. Uh, Deepti ji, I have a little doubt I would like to ask, uh, especially about Draupadi's character. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it says yeah. that ke, uh, in most of the cases, uh, Draupadi has been painted as uh, she was the reason behind uh, Mahabharata. The entire Mahabharata was her revenge kind of thing. Uh, but it doesn't look like uh, uh, to me uh, in some sense. And she has many shades, like uh, she's not always positive. She has some darker sides as well along with her. So overall, what do you think about that character in general? Uh, do you do you support this view that she was the reason behind Mahabharat? I don't uh, support that view because I personally feel that these brothers had, uh, uh, you know, it was a generational conflict that was going on and getting passed on from generation to generation, and uh, it was a legacy of that conflict that they were all they all had inherited. So she just became a reason. Uh, a momentary reason, but the, I, I think uh, it had to happen either way. Uh, it was coming to that because if you if you read up on their even their childhood, the, you know they were always ready to. Uh, I mean, it was it was coming down to that moment at some point whether when they would go to war. Uh, I, on the, uh, for the second question, I feel uh, this is what makes her. I I personally feel the one of the most interesting characters out of out of them or out of all the panchakanyas because i think she has so many dark moments but uh, she embraces those moments and i think she uh, comes out stronger as sometimes she lets in and then she talks about how uh, you know uh, she did give in at the, uh, the, at those moments and she uh, kind of also pays the price for it so you know she does live out her she does live out a very full life in that way. She has her own that so she has her own uh, share of sorrow because of the actions she commits. So I personally feel that's what makes a character uh, uh, because she lives a full life in that way, and I think that's what makes a character uh, very uh, like. And also, even towards the end, it's not like that she needs a happy ending. You know, she she needs a peaceful ending because I think that's what was eluding her all her life. But she does lose her children uh, in this battle, in this in this war. So she does, uh, uh, you know, ha ha she always has a great sense of loss in that way because of uh, what she wanted. So uh, I think that's what makes her character uh, one of the most uh, interesting and layered amongst all of them. Yeah, that's an interesting answer. <clears throat> Diksha ji, you can continue. Yes. Hello, Deepti ji. My yeah, question hi. is... Yeah. Uh, my question is also in continuation with what Sharvari ji has just asked. A few days back, I was reading a book named as My Krishna Who uh, by Trivedi ji. Uh, there he, us, uh, Bhagavan Shri Krishna ki perception se, uh, what he used to, he, uh, kya sochte honge wo's time pe, us is uh, the writer has tried to uh, write the book. So, usme Dropadi ji ke a, do tin characteristics ke baare mein, uh, he mentions out of one, which is that one is ki wo uh, Bhagavan Shri Krishna pe, sabse zada, she was the one who used to trust a. But the second aspect is, jo abhi Sharvari ji ne bhi bola, that is that she was a bit ahankari, uh, which was also one uh, very prime reason of the Mahabharata. So about this character of her, what, what will be your comment on it? I think she was obviously egoistic and that is, um, uh, that is something, and, and she was temperamental. So that is something that, that is written uh, about 
a lot and she does address it towards uh, uh, you know especially after she loses her children in uh, in one of the conversations uh, and again you know there's so many versions of uh, uh, the mahabharat and the ramayan and we've all read up, uh, some versions so i'm not going to be uh, i'm not going to talk like an expert on the subject but and from what i've read that there is a conversation when she asks bhagwan krishna that if you knew what was going to happen why didn't you interfere and uh, he said but you wanted this you were so consumed by your uh, uh, you know wish for revenge that you wanted it so and then then you can't pick and choose uh, what what uh, like you know once you let set a, a something in in motion you cannot pick and choose what might come off it so she does bear the brunt of it and uh, so i do think uh, uh, she is egoistic and uh, she does get consumed by her own sense of self sometimes but uh, that's what makes her uh, uh, interesting as well her vulnerability and her uh, uh, that's what makes her more real i feel Uh, Deepthi ji, there is one question asked by Anandi. Uh, hmm. She is asking. Uh, there is a story that says when Draupadi came with Arjun, Kunti said, "Share it with all five brothers," and then it was decided that she would be married to all other five brothers as well. Uh, isn't this a bit far-fetched story? Uh, what do you think about Draupadi's decision after that that she was asked to ask? I don't think it's far-fetched. I think uh, it's an arrangement uh, that might. Uh, may not be legally uh, held uh, in a lot of uh, places but uh, uh, but i don't think it's far fetched at all, at all and when i when i when i will go into kunti's chapter i will talk about why she uh, said what she said and why she did what she did because i think she did not want she wanted her five sons to be tied to at least one common person you know and instead of them all in uh, instead of in fighting to happen and uh, it and she, even kunti uh, says that she's not particularly proud of what she did but she did it knowingly i feel um kaveri ji you can go ahead hi hi ma'am uh, i had the same question what anandi just asked regarding uh, marrying five, five uh, men uh also uh, when i read uh, uh, this book called palace of illusions it's up from dropadi's point of view um yeah. and in this it's mentioned that uh, she more, more than all the five people that she married she used to trust krishna the, the most and wo unke sakha the basically but then out of them when the first time she met karn uh, that's also mentioned ki wo arjun se bhi zyada कर्ण की के लिए मोहित थी सो इफ इज इट लाइक समथिंग दैट यू हैव कम थ्रू वाइल यू रिसर्च अबाउट इट और वॉज इट जस्ट इन लाइक अ फार फेज आइडिया और समथिंग दैट्स बीन यू नो जस्ट टॉक अबाउट पर्टिकुलरली कम अक्रॉस दिस आई थिंक चित्र दिवा कुर्नी हेज रिटन अबाउट इट आई थिंक it was also more uh, from the point of view to uh, to compare arjun and karan that they they had uh, an attraction which was co- possibly at par so maybe just to portray that she uh, she took that uh, angle in her book and uh, i haven't particularly come across this kind of that uh, that dropati had some hidden attraction for uh, karan i didn't come across it but i understand why she has written about it because i think it was also to kind of put both those characters at par because they did have uh, a lot of uh, you know they are, they were equally uh, strong they were equally competitive so i think it was it was uh, i think maybe it was done to uh, to put karan and uh, arjun at par in terms of their uh, competency and so, and view them through the same moment I, I personally feel that that could have been the reason. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Suruchi, you can go ahead. Okay, so uh, this brings us to Kunti. We get to know Kunti in the Hindu epic Mahabharat, written by Rishi Vyas. Her character is unarguably one of the most interesting characters of Hindu history, as she is the perfect link between her mother-in-law Satyavati and daughter-in-law Draupadi. 
uh, I won't go into her story so much right now because I do want uh, all of you all to read the book at some point. Uh, but I will read some uh, excerpts from her story. Uh, in one which she says, secrets have power over us. They make us vulnerable. They make us weak. They make us guilty. They will come out no matter what. You can't wish them away. Here she's talking about uh, Karan, who is often uh, uh, considered as her illegitimate child with uh, uh, the sun god. And uh, because she had a boon and she uh, had a uh, child with him out of curiosity to test that boon. And, uh, but she uh, puts him away because she was, uh, uh, she was a teenager that time and she, was, uh, she wasn't married. And uh, so she's talking about him, how he, she does encounter him later on in, in her life. Uh, she also talks about how she was a single woman raising, a single mother raising her children in a hostile environment uh, where she says, my children were attacked many times during their growing up years. It was always made to look like an accident, but I knew. I also knew I had to bide my time, no matter how dangerous it was. I had to wait for them to grow up, to have some standing in the scheme of things. So this actually uh, makes her as one of the most uh, calm, solid uh, characters out of all five of them. She, she is not reactive at all. She is somebody who always stands back. And because she's a mother, she uh, always takes, uh, act, she always, uh, all her actions are taken with the mother's role uh, in, in her mind. Uh, in the end, she does talk about, although we won the war, my sons could never forgive me for hiding the fact that Karan was their brother. Though my children finally got their rightful place in history, I could never forgive myself for sacrificing my firstborn. Uh, in one of, in, uh, at one point, she talks about Draupadi, where she says, Draupadi was equal in many ways, where I spent most of my life as a widow she had to spend hers married to five men. It wasn't her choice. I had asked her to marry my five sons, so they stayed in unison towards a common goal. Did she hate me for it? Most likely. Did she resist it? No. She took it in her stride and slowly made a place for herself in their lives. This both irritated me and fascinated me at the same time. So their relationship was very complicated as most um, mother in mothers-in-law and daughters-in-law relationships are. Uh, yeah, so this we've covered. Then um, she does talk about the three women in her life called Satyavati, Madri, uh, and Gandhari, and how she took away one quality from all of them. And she talks about timing, where she says, I've never reacted impulsively towards the Kauravs. I knew we weren't in a position to oppose them under their roof. Timing is everything. That's one of the biggest lessons I learned in my life. So that was Kunti's story. We can now come to Mandodri, uh, who is uh, married to Ravan. Uh, I've called her Mandodri, the silent warrior. Even though married to Ravan, who belonged to the Rakshas family, Mandodri always tried strive to keep the spiritual in the animalistic alive. She was a perfect example of nature versus nurture. She often questions the religious aspect of her husband because uh, Ra Ravan was known to be a very big Shiv Bhakt and a, and a very religious man. So she says, what are all these rituals if they don't inspire you to become a better version of yourself? What use is that knowledge which does lead you on a path of goodness and the greater good. Ravan was a highly intelligent man with great knowledge of the scriptures and holy texts, but all that knowledge didn't lead to any wisdom. There is a point where she talks of Sita, where she says, as a woman, I felt bad for Sita. I wanted to reach out to her, talk to her and share her pain. As a wife, I wanted to take my pain and humiliation out on her. She talks about how you keep ignoring certain signs and that's what leads to bigger mishaps in your life. And when she talks about Sita, she says the other woman becomes a source of intrigue for any wife. You have too much pride to hate her publicly as you don't want to seem faced by her. You also want to show your family and friends that your position vis-a-vis -vis your husband is secure. 
she talks about how we women are one where she actually talks that there are so many things common between her her sister nasupnaka and sita she talks that how there is a certain plight that goes through a uh, women i mean which they share collectively which i found very very interesting in her story um then coming to tara the last uh, character in panchkanyas tara uh, not much is written or known about this kanya except for maybe a few chapters by rishi valmiki in the epic ramayan do some sources say that she was the daughter of a physician sushena from the vanar clan most versions believe she was an apsara born of the churning of the milky ocean the samudra manthan tara was married to bali and reigned as the queen of the kingdom of kishikanda in the epic ramayan rishi valmiki writes how she was an equal to bali in every way her intelligence statesmanship and ability to read people and situations were widely admired in her own story uh, where i have imagined her own words she says i was born of a tug of war and lived my life constantly being in one always torn between two brothers vali and sukhdev my life wasn't the win win that it looked like from the outside i was an apsara a celestial nymph but in this lifetime i was to play the role of a vanar queen and that i played to the best of my ability belonging to such different species and spending my life being born a certain way and marrying a completely different way of life lent me a unique ability to understand different languages habitats instincts and people talking about when when bhagwan ram killed vali she says do i could never completely come to terms with the way my husband was killed i decided to march on and live the rest of my years as queen and mother i might have had to marry sugriv his brother but i made sure i was not treated as spoils of war i had my own place and my own destiny she reminds me of uh, a so a quote by swami vivekanand when he says women will work out their destinies much better too than men can do for them all the mischief to women has has come because men undertook the shape of destiny shape the destiny of women at one point she says i didn't let one or two tragedies get in the way of my life plan my son had only me to rely on i only had myself to rely on i improvise constantly life really goes as we envision it so you need to have backups i was my biggest backup so this was the story of uh, uh, tara these were all the stories uh, now i can again open the floor for anybody who wants to ask anything out of these three characters or from the book um, from any other and any other part of the book as well i guess medha you can go ahead for question medha ji yes ma'am thank you good evening ma'am um evening. I, i had a question that what is the strongest inspiration you came across on your journey to this publication you'd like to share to all the wonderful women you know when i i uh, and i have written it in my uh, for, forward as well i i have written that how when i started writing this book me the me too movement had just uh, begun and it was it was you know everywhere on the news we had that and that that made me realize that you know every woman has a story uh, it doesn't have to be a negative story as uh, but but it is a story that they want to share with the world and uh, that made me think that how women in hindu history specifically have always had amazing stories you know they were always they were not just characters that took the plot forward they were fully fledged uh, people who had their own destinies their own uh, 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 you know intentions you know they they all fulfilled their own uh, path in life so i found uh, i thought that even their stories should come out and uh, i should write it in a way that's uh, very relatable relatable that i would like to read it's a very quick read the book it's very simply written i have not over complicated any uh, aspect i have not uh, gone on and on about any aspect i've written their stories in short because i just wanted more and more girls to read about these panchkanyas and uh, because i thought their stories were very very relevant uh, and that's why i wrote and i i think they, uh, and i think once you read the book maybe hopefully you'll also feel the same way yes ma'am thank you so much 
Suruchi, you can go ahead. Uh, hello, it has Hi. been great listening to you talk. Thank you. And I have been, uh, you know, I, I've really been looking forward to reading the book. Uh, it's uh, on Amazon if anybody wants to order. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I, I'm really glad that you, you know, you, you went ahead and actually wrote about this because Thank you so much. writing about the panchkanyas that I have come across has been by men. So the interpretation. Yeah, they were, I, I think there are two, three books and I don't think there are a lot, there's, there's a lot written in English, in, in the English language. I mean, I think that yes. a couple of books that I came with, yeah. Yes. So like there is, uh, uh, Rabindranath Thakur wrote a collection of essays. And I believe there's yeah. also a book by Pradeep Bhattacharya. Uh, and yeah. uh, it's all from a very hyper-masculine, uh, you know, male-centric... And it's slightly dry, and it's slightly dry uh, way of... Yes, uh, definitely. And I loved how it was so relatable. Like, I, I got to read the chapter about Ahilya. And uh, yeah. there were so many things about, especially the part where she talked about how she was stuck in this web between uh, Brahma yeah. and Rishi Gautam and Indra where she felt like she was not her own person anymore. She was just a plot device in these other people's stories. And exactly, uh, yeah. It was just so wonderfully put that I, this is something that I would want every girl I know, regardless of their political leanings to definitely read, because there's so much to learn. But uh, at the same time, I had a question for you, which is that, uh, you know, cancel culture is very prevalent right now. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you're on. If you know, if, even if you are uh, so-called right-leaning, but you say something that is perhaps a little bit against how people idealize uh, people and characters from Hindu history, it, they get really heated up about it. And in your chapter about Ahilya, uh, I saw that you did not pull. Uh, you pull some punches against Indra and Rishi Gautam and Brahma. Yeah. And uh, these are all things that I have thought to myself at some point of time. But I was, you know, it felt so nice to hear someone say that, you know, to call these people out on the way they have behaved and treated women. But are you at any point afraid of cancel culture from the hyper-masculine sometimes uh, 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 Twitter trolls and Instagram warriors that exist uh, in our society? And uh, have you considered how your writings could create ripples in that range of, uh, you know, in that spectrum of people who we perhaps don't in interact with every day, but, uh, you know, they definitely exist and they definitely don't like women that much. So uh, what do you feel about that? Okay, uh, first of all, I would say that I think um, that is bound to happen. Whenever you discuss any, uh, any, character, any characters from uh, a collective history, I think there are enough in interpretations of it. So I think uh, enough people would criticize it. So that, uh, that is, uh, which is good. I think any conversation is better than no conversation. Uh, secondly, I, I was aware of this, that I shouldn't offend anybody uh, as far as I can help it. See, uh, I mean, just because I'm narrating a story, I'm sure, as I said, there will be some people who might not like the take I've taken on, uh, on these people, on these women, so, um, and all the other characters involved. So I'm very aware of that. But I was also, uh, I was also aware of the fact that I shouldn't be a factually wrong. Or, or, you know, make a big blunder somewhere. Oh, and hopefully I haven't. So I did uh, send certain, I, while I was writing, I did keep sending certain excerpts to uh, my mentor at that time. And also uh, to other girls, uh, uh, some of you uh, also, like some of the nestlings. And I did keep getting some feedback. So that made me realize that I am on the right track. You know, I'm not, uh, uh, hopefully not uh, offending too many people along the way and some I think you will so that that's okay that doesn't worry me uh, but as as uh, as long as uh, more people uh, take away something from the book and I'm not um, disrespected anybody in any way and I think that, that that's fine the rest is all, also up, up to interpretation and as I said all conversation is good as long as there is one okay wonderful love that love that you thought about it thank yeah. you so much Nancy. yeah
Shruti ji, you can go ahead. सीताराम मैम बहुत मैं शुरुआत से बहुत ध्यान से सुन रही हूँ और बहुत ज्यादा अच्छा लगा मतलब इस विषय पर बहुत कम लोग सोचते हैं लिखने का और तो मैं मंदोदरी के बारे में कुछ पूछना चाहती थी मैंने बहुत पढ़ा है तो और बहुत देखा भी है हम नॉर्मली भी अगर देखते हैं या सुनते हैं कि मंदोदरी और रावण अगर रावण की बात की जाए तो रावण अहंकार में बहुत से गलत कदम उठा लेते तो मंदोदरी उनको एक तरह से गाइड कर देती थी आपको ये करना चाहिए ये नहीं करना चाहिए और वो बहुत ध्यान से उनको सुनते भी थे तो मंदोदरी और रावण के बीच में एक किस तरह का रिश्ता एक्चुअल में था हमारे जो भी है साहित्यिक चीजें जो गुजर चुकी है उसके हिसाब से आप उनके रिश्ते के बारे में क्या सोचते हैं क्योंकि मुझे जहां तक लगता है जैसे मंदोदरी ने सीता के बारे में बहुत कुछ बोला आपने बताया कि उनको अच्छा नहीं लगता था उन्होंने यहाँ तक रावण से भी बोला कि सीता माता को राम जी को लौटा दीजिए ये सही नहीं है तो उनका जो इम्पैक्ट है वो बहुत ज्यादा पॉजिटिव पड़ता है बहुत जगहों में बहुत स्ट्रोंग एक बहुत स्ट्रोंग इम्पैक्ट पड़ता है कि वो बहुत ज्यादा जैसे कि आपने बोला कि आपने वॉरियर बोला उनको उटसाइड नाउ समी नो लाइक इवन मॉडर्न फेमिन वुमेन कैन से the samber here was talking about cancel culture can say oh she was a doormat she never stood up to ravan but it wasn't like that she was a silent warrior i feel she was uh, the balancing pact in her in her life but obviously he was a more overpowering personality and she did everything in her power to make him do the right thing but at at one point she failed but that doesn't take away from the efforts she constantly did and the efforts she did even after he failed so i feel that's that's what makes her uh, character important that at least she was always on the right path she was constantly watching all the signs she constantly kept warning him and uh, so i think in she played her part beautifully no matter what the outcome was and a lot of uh, the a lot of these times a lot of uh, times the grand design will take place right because the good versus evil war uh, there has to be some reason for uh, evil to perish and that's why these you know these texts become um, as relevant through time because the grand design will take place no matter uh, who i mean we can't change ki maybe she would have done something different and he would have given uh, ma sita back so wo sto- wo uh, pura wo to nahi change ho sakta the story had to play out the way it, it played out and the, and as we we talk about the cycle of life the story will again repeat itself but uh, that doesn't take away from her role which was uh you know doing everything right uh in her capacity to uh to stop it okay uh mujhe ek aur cheez puchni thi ma'am uh jaise ki main matlab bahut log jab uh hamari history se kuch cheez nikal ke extract nikal kar likhna shuru karte hain so i guess I I see I'm not a writer. <laughs> I just thought about it और मुझे लगा कि मुझे पूछना चाहिए तो बहुत से राइटर्स जब लिखना शुरू करते हैं तो ऐसा रहता है कि जब बुक कम्प्लीट होकर पब्लिश होकर आती है तो उसके अगेंस्ट भी बहुत लोग बोलने वाले होते हैं क्योंकि डेफिनेटली जब हिस्ट्री से चीजें एक्सट्रैक्ट होकर आ रही है तो बहुत लोगों का हर किसी का ओपिनियन अलग होता है हर चीज को लेकर तो जब आपने लिखना शुरू किया था और आप पब्लिश करने के लिए जा रहे थे इस कंटेंट को इस बुक को सो क्या आपके दिमाग में था इन चीजों को लेकर मुझे ये जानना है सी ओपिनियन uh, तो आजकल हिस्ट्री uh, के बारे में नहीं पॉलिटिक्स के बारे में स्पोर्ट्स के बारे में सब, सबका बहुत ज्यादा ओपिनियन है वी आर लिविंग इन अपर ओपिनियनेटेड वर्ल्ड वी आर लिविंग इन अपर पोलराइज वर्ल्ड सो आई एम पीडी अवेयर ऑफ इट आई स्टिल फेल्ट दैट आई हैव केप्ट अ बैलेंस्ड व्यू i feel that uh, the language that i've used is balanced it's not leaning towards any side uh, i've used uh, very cool terminology some places very simple language some places but at the same time i have constantly tried to educate in my uh, uh, in my limited capacity the reader about certain things about hindu uh, hindu religion 
that have no equivalent in the english language like i've talked about who the, who devrishi is what was the Samud samudra manthan uh, what is a yagna so i have uh, i have i think i have done it from a place of respect i i am i'm a very dharmic person i come from a very dharmic uh, uh, point of view in life so i think jo mera basic leaning hai jo basic alignment hai wo dharmic hai to i i hope wo galat nahi hua hoga because wo mera basic alignment of mind hai so i don't think i would have been disrespectful in any way but at the same time i wanted to reach out a modern urban audience through this so yes i have uh, simplified certain uh, things uh, maybe in sub characters pe to bahut badi badi books likhi ja sakti hai ahilya pe ek puri book likhi ja sakti hai and all so i have obviously condensed to kahi koi aisi cheeze ho sakti hai which which don't go down well with some people but i guess uh, that's fine agar bahut kisi ko hurt hoga kuch to we'll apo- i'll apologize for it but this uh, i think uh, i've tried to be quite balanced and i've tried to address them in the in in the more on the most honest way that i could thank you so much ma'am i just love the way you talk thank <laughs> you so much aapne jis tarah se pura explain kiya aur main bahut zyada khush hu ki itni achhi book aa rahi hai and i will definitely read it thank, thank you, you so, so much, much thank ma'am. you so much shruti Uh, Aditi ji, you can ask now. Greetings, ma'am. Good, good evening. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, thank you so much for your gracious presence and enlightenment. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I had a question. Uh, the characters uh, you have portrayed in your book, how can their approach be relevant in uh, com- battling with the present day stereotypes about women? Um. See, like for example, let's just take the story of Ahilya. uh and it i mean that that label of being an adulteress or being somebody who cheats on her husband so to speak uh, is something uh, which 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 can play out in the modern world also right but why a woman does what she does at the moment where she feels weak or she transgresses uh, very few people see the uh, the point leading up to uh, the everything leading up to that point and how she uh, might come out of it also you know how she how she lives her life going forward so i think uh, all these women are relevant in terms of uh, their life can totally be uh, uh, put in in today's context everything that they have uh, talked about in this book so uh, like kunti as being a single mother you know sometimes you live in a family where you feel that uh, you're part of a big joint setup where you feel that your children are not getting their due as as somebody else's children uh but you you still live because you need that infrastructure for your children you know not everybody just like packs their bags and leaves you do what is good for your children in the longer uh, uh, uh term of things and uh, for tara like you know how her husband gets killed but that doesn't mean that she stops living she lives her life for her son uh, so a lot of like every part of the story i felt was relevant to everybody and it will stay relevant forever and that's what makes our text so amazing you know and i mean i genuinely feel the mahabharat is the most complicated layered yet the most universal text written for human kind i mean even if you read it a million times it's not enough you know how beautifully all the characters are written and how you know they all think how they feel how they act and how they re- Read at how they react. Everything is so amazingly written that I think its relevance will never be lost. You know, it will stay forever and ever. Thank you so much, ma'am, for explaining this. Thank you. 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 Uh, मैंने हर वुमेन में एक अलग ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन देखा है बट देर इज वन थिंग कॉमन कॉमन इन ऑल वुमेन इज द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑफ बींग अ मदर सो अकॉर्डिंग टू यू वट वॉज द बिगेस्ट ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इन योर लाइफ आफ्टर यू बिकेम अ मदर आई थिंक यू बिकम अ बेटर पर्सन आई फील आई थिंक द मोमेंट यू स्टार्ट केयरिंग फॉर वन मोर तो थोड़ा अपना सेल्फ बैक हो जाता है यू नो यू यू टेक अ बैक सीट इन लाइफ एवरीथिंग यू स्टार्ट व्यूइंग थिंग्स फ्रॉम दैट दैट इंडिविजुअल्स आईज यू यू वांट अ बेटर वर्ल्ड फॉर देम यू वांट अ फेयरर वर्ल्ड फॉर देम 
सो यू सैट डू यू सै यू बिकम अ स्लाइटली बेटर ह्यूमन बींग थोड़ा कंपैशन ज्यादा आता है लाइफ में यू वॉन्ट टू टीच दैम द राइट वैल्यूज और कहीं ना कहीं यू यू स्टार्ट लिविंग स्लाइटली बेटर लाइफ तो आई फील मदरहुड इज समथिंग एंड इट्स नॉट ओनली बाय अ चाइल्ड यू कैन फील इट थ्रू अ कॉज दैट यू फील फॉर यू कैन यू कैन फील इट थ्रू एनिमल्स यू कैन फील लाइक बट आई फील इट्स 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 एन स्लाइटली हायर स्टेप इन योर पर्सनल एवोल्यूशन थोड़ा सा सेल्फलेसनेस आ जाती है लाइफ में थैंक यू मैम राइट दीप्ति जी आई थिंक वी कैन टेक वन मोर क्वेश्चन या एनीबडी धनकोवर जी यस गुड इवनिंग मैम थैंक यू सो मच इतनी अच्छी बुक लिखने के लिए और मैंने भी मंगाई और फर्स्ट जो पंच कन्या है उनके बारे में पढ़ा है और बहुत अच्छा लगा मुझे एक अलग पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू देखने के लिए समझने के लिए मुझे ये जानना था जो आपने इनको सीक्वेंस में रखा है उसके पीछे कोई स्ट्रॉन्ग रीजन है कि पहले अहिल्या जी द्रौपदी या फिर जस्ट मतलब कि आप पढ़ते हैं और उनको या कोई मतलब उसके पीछे रहता ना कि कोई कारण हो सकता है जो मैंने फर्स्ट लिखा था तो पहले मैं एज वाइज सोच रही थी अहिल्या बिकॉज शी वॉज अ वेरी यंग वाइफ तो मे बी शी समी इन ट्वेंटीज हु ट्रांसग्रेसिस देन थर्ड द्रौपदी उसकी लाइफ का ग्राफ इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग बिकॉज शी गोज फ्रॉम अ टीन एजर टू अ यंग मदर तो पहले तो ऐसे ही सोचा था बट आई थिंक जब एंड में चैप्टर्स मिले तो ऐसा कुछ दिस नो दिस नो क्रोनोलॉजी दैट आई फॉलोड फिर वो रैंडमली लिख दिया बट आई थॉट कि थोड़ा थोड़ा रेलिवेंस एज वाइज होना चाहिए तो दैट वे तो कुंती को शायद एंड में आना चाहिए था बिकॉज यू नो शी इज Um, older than all of them, at least in terms of her, uh, you know, by the way her story ends. But I think, no, I have not thought about it. I have not put it in a sequence. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Right, Deepthi ji, thank you for such a lovely session. Uh, 